After a little bit over a week, we finally have a decision on Kyle Larson and the playoff waiver, and NASCAR has decided to grant him a playoff waiver for 2024. Let's go through how NASCAR came up with that decision. Plus, I'm going to give my thoughts on the waiver. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. Do you think that Kyle Larson deserved the waiver? Do you think he deserved not to get the waiver? Let me know down below. Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. It was announced just earlier today that Kyle Larson will be receiving the playoff waiver. Hell, it's about time. And there's been a bunch of discussions, a bunch of talk about this going over the last week. The way this waiver works, it's for drivers if they're injured or unable to make an event. NASCAR has the privilege to grant them a playoff waiver. And in the history of the playoff waiver, I think there's only been two or three that weren't given. And the most notable out of those was Grant Infinger a couple of years ago did not get a playoff waiver. He missed a race due to a lack of sponsorship for the event. But then you have a driver like Chase Elliott who last year got two playoff waivers, once for his injury on the slopes and the other one for getting suspended after right hooking Denny Hamlin into the outside wall. What happened Memorial Day weekend was unprecedented, and even Elton Sawyer said, this is uncharted waters for NASCAR and the waiver rule. Elton Sawyer being the senior vice president of competition, you've heard his name and heard him talk a lot recently about certain things going on in the industry. And I'd say he gave an okay explanation, but I'll get more into the waiver rule later on what my problem is with it and what my problem was with his explanation. One thing that was made very clear by Elton Sawyer that this decision was not a 100% decision. There was a lot of pushback and that's one of the reasons why it took so long. There was a lot of conversations. There was a lot of thought about this decision because like I said, it's unprecedented. I'll be putting Elton Sawyer's discussion with the media in the description but one of the other things he said that this was a very in particular situation and that's why they were willing to make the exception for this situation because NASCAR and motorsports really like the double. Everybody likes to see the double or at least see the double attempted. It was just really unfortunate that weather got in the way and Kyle Larson and Hendrick decided to stay in Indianapolis to compete in the Indianapolis 500. Sawyer and NASCAR made it clear that they do not like it when drivers miss their races for another race, but it sounded like from the discussion that Elton Sawyer said that the Indy 500 could potentially be the one exception for this instance because of how big of an event it is and how much crossover we have with this event over the years there has been multiple drivers that have done the double and like i mentioned it's great for motorsports and i don't think nascar or anybody else wants to get in the way so kyle larson is back in the championship race it looked like he could potentially be out because they were even having the points set up on nascar.com and everything where he didn't have his playoff points he wasn't included in the playoffs it was a little confusing there for a couple of days some people were honestly thinking that he wasn't going to get the waiver because of what was going on with the points. Also, the fact that it took so long was not a good sign that this could end up turning out to be a declined playoff waiver. But Kyle Larson has been potentially the strongest driver in the Cup Series, not just this season, but the last couple of years. And it would have been a shame to not see him compete for the championship here in a couple of months. I know that Kyle Larson and Hendrick we're really sweating it there for a little bit. Kyle Larson even posted this this morning. So congratulations to Kyle Larson, the number five team, Hendrick Motorsports. So right before I discuss my problems with the waiver and even my problems with Elton Sawyer's explanation and even Kyle Larson getting a waiver, 
I would like to start off by saying I'm happy Larson got the waiver with some of the things I mentioned before. He's been one of the strongest drivers this season. He's a legitimate championship contender. He has multiple wins on the season. He will probably get more wins on the season. Plus, most people say, and I agree that he is the most talented driver in the United States. And I personally would say he's the most talented driver in the whole entire world. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! And if NASCAR kicked him out of championship potential, that would have been not just a bad look for the NASCAR fans, but the whole motorsports community. You would have seen this talked about on everything. Am I a joke to you? And overall, it just would have made NASCAR look really bad as a whole, making it look like it almost threw a tantrum because Kyle Larson decided to race the 500 over the Coca-Cola 600. And it sounds like there was actually a lot of higher ups that were very upset that Kyle Larson chose the Indianapolis 500 over the Coca-Cola 600. But luckily, they came to the right finish, the right decision, where Kyle Larson got the waiver. That being said, in my opinion, the whole waiver program, the waiver thing that they have for the playoffs, I just I think it's silly, and I just think they should get rid of it. I understand why the rule is in place. They do not want drivers skipping events, whether that comes to the fans or the overall look at the sport. They don't want drivers skipping the Bush Clash or skipping the all-star race or skipping any of these races that have a lower payout than most events they want every driver at every race for the series sponsors for the series look and for most of all the fans at the track looking to support their favorite driver but if you're going to have a playoff waiver you need to have some real rules and regulations to it because it just seems like nascar makes the rules whenever they want when it comes to this rule in particular i'm all for them keeping the playoff waiver if they make it a real reason for a playoff waiver i do not think drivers should be getting playoff waivers for suspensions i really like that they do have that for injuries that's another reason for the playoff waiver that way drivers don't have to act healthy and fight injury because that's a big historic fact when it comes to nascar you've heard dale Earnhardt jr and many drivers talk about it racing hurt whether that's concussed or a legitimate injury a lot of these drivers race through these injuries and cause themselves more harm in the long run when they can just sit out a race or two and get healthy and getting this playoff waiver secures a shot at the playoffs and the championship without risking it all by just sitting out a week because you're concussed or have some sort of injury the way i understand the waiver policy is if you miss an event you're not allowed to compete for the championship unless NASCAR grants you a waiver. Because with the way I understand the rules, to me, Kyle Larson maybe shouldn't get a waiver. But like I said, if Chase Elliott's going to get a waiver for right hooking somebody into the wall and getting suspended, why shouldn't Kyle Larson? Elton Sawyer was saying during his explanation that he doesn't really think the rule needs to be looked at or changed and any sort of way but they will assess things in the off season as they do with all their rules and policies and like i said when it comes to this waiver policy i'm okay with them keeping it if they make it very clear on what gets a waiver and what does not but if you're not going to make it clear and make the rules up as you go as they've done with not just the playoff waiver but with many different things they should just get rid of it they should just get rid of the playoff waiver, in my opinion. Will they do that? No, they're not going to get rid of it. But they really should because it's causing a lot of arguments and it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. And if it were up to me to decide what you get a playoff waiver for, there would only be three things that would make me give you a playoff waiver. The first one obvious an injury if a driver has an injury in my opinion they should get the playoff waiver the only thing i would probably change about this i would give it a sort of limit as you can see i'm a kyle bush fan huge kyle bush fan he's my favorite driver but when he broke his leg when he won the championship a couple of years ago actually it's 10 years ago at this point when he won that championship 
he got a playoff waiver even though he sat out what like a third of the races he sat out a whole bunch of races so in my opinion if you sit out a maybe let's let's say more than six races if you if you're out for more than six races you should not compete for the championship that's just kind of a rough number thrown out there because you have to put a limit on it in some sort of way because one of these days who knows i'm just playing devil's advocate right here what if a driver gets hurt at the duel of daytona and they're not able to come back until we're back at daytona for the first race before the playoffs and they get a playoff waiver and they win that race so you're telling me a driver that raced one race during the regular season which they won they're in the playoffs and the way the rule is set up at the moment that is in fact true that would happen so i'm not saying exactly six races that's just kind of the first number that comes to my head i would probably have to think about it a little more maybe eight races something like that but they need to put a limit on it when it comes to injury the second thing i would say is family affairs for example like a driver catching the birth of their child you always have standby drivers when you hear about this sort of thing and ultimately the choice is up to the driver and i feel like some drivers would prefer to go to the hospital and skip the race altogether so they can catch the birth of their child but a lot of these drivers aren't going to do that because of sponsorship reasons contract obligations and knowing that they're not going to get a playoff waiver for missing the event i would also include deaths in that you never know when a loved one is going to die they're very emotional situations for people and a lot of these drivers are going to want to spend time with their family for a couple of days after something like that could potentially happen and the third and final reason i would give a playoff waiver would be because of this exact situation so that third reason would be prior commitments that help improve the sport of nascar so what do i mean by that exactly well kyle larson driving in the indianapolis 500 was a good promotion for nascar and made nascar drivers look better than i think a lot of people think they are and overall it got nascar talked about in multiple different communities that don't usually talk about nascar talk about kyle larson and stuff like that you saw all this on espn different channels that you don't usually see nascar on would i say this is an only indianapolis 500 sort of thing no but i think this would primarily maybe even only be used for the indianapolis 500 because of the overlap but i would also include this in maybe a 24 hours of le mans or any of those huge races overseas because what kyle larson has done not just for nascar but for motorsports over the last month month and a half is amazing impressive it, it's it just it deserves a round of applause it doesn't deserve to be questioned or slandered or anything like that it really irritates me that there were actual higher ups that were really upset about kyle larson racing the indianapolis 500 over the coca-cola 600 some of these people actually think the coca-cola 600 means more on the grander scale than the indianapolis 500 in my opinion being the big nascar fan that i am the indianapolis 500 is the most prestigious race in the world every driver wants to win the indianapolis 500 but let me know your thoughts below what did you think about the decision of granting kyle larson a playoff waiver do you 100 percent agree with the decision do you disagree or are you kind of feeling like me where you agree with the decision but at the same time you're just not okay with the waiver policy whatsoever let me know in the comments but that'll do it for me my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace